My next guest is David Crook. He's a commercial airline pilot and an author of a book now on Amazon, uh, A Pilot's Life for Me. Uh, please welcome David Crook to the podcast. David, how are you doing? How's lockdown been for you? I wish I just missed all of that, so I do apologise. That's right. Um, That's right. How are you? I, I'm okay, thank you. Yeah. I've got an unstable connection, apparently, so we'll see how this goes. Okay. Uh, no so problem. I do apologise. But yeah, it's been all right. It's been, been a bit boring. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's one of those weird things. It's sort of, you've got nothing going on, but you're really hectic at the same time. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the missus comes yeah. up with, with all, you know, all the list of stuff for me to do in the morning. <laughs> and uh, it seems to keep me busy. So, yeah, yeah it's, been, uh, it's been frustrating, especially, you know, in, in my sort of choice of career. It's been frustrating, but uh, it's yeah. been all right. Yeah. yeah. So, right. so, so, so are you a commercial airline pilot or are you a private, do you, do you fly the private global jets? What do you fly? No, so I, I'm a commercial airline pilot. Um, I fly for a charter airline at the moment. Um, so we do a bit of everything. Um, so we do sort of the IP stuff uh, and we also do uh, flying on behalf, behalf of other airlines as well. Oh, okay. uh, so I'll be doing all your packet and spade destinations. Um, okay. As well. So it's, it's a good mix, actually. It's a good mix as opposed to a scheduled pilot. You know, someone like uh, EasyJet or Ryanair, he's yeah. got a, a not regular scheduled flight. Um, yeah. We do sort of a bit of everything. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, how how long have you been flying for? How long? Uh, I've well, I've had a private license uh, since I was eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, so, sort of most of me, or well, all me, adult life, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been flying commercially for about four years now. Okay, okay. So, um, what aircraft did you train in then? What what was the? So, so I've. I've you train in quite a, a few sort of different, they're all, all light aircraft to start off with. Um, yeah. Little aircraft uh, called a Piper Warrior, which is a little four seat aircraft, it's a bit like a car yeah. with wings. Mm -hmm. um, then you progress up when you, once you start doing different types of training um, onto more complicated aircraft with more yeah. engine um, that can, you know, fly in different weather and stuff like that. So uh, I've advanced onto something called a DA42 Twin Star. Um, yeah. It's a really nice little plane. I mean, if you ever get to fly in it, as a private job, I don't, I don't know if you have, but um, nice little aircraft. Really? Okay. Um, okay. And then sort of progressed up, up to there through, um, well, through to my commercial jobs. Okay. Uh, okay. So, I mean, commercially, mm -hmm. um, I've flown, uh, well, my first aircraft was something called a Saab 2000. Um, and most people obviously know Saab as a car maker. Yeah, yeah. The, the 9.3, what, 900 turbo and, and such yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Um. But they make, they make um, some people know them for making planes as well. They make a lot of military jets. Yeah. Um, and they also make some commercial airliners. One was a, a turboprop. Um, it's quite an old aircraft now. I think it was sort of early 90s. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, even now, it's still the, commercial, the fastest commercial aircraft, sorry, fastest commercial turboprop um, aircraft flying. Not too many of them these days, but it's a great aircraft. Um, okay. How many seats is that? How, how many seats has that got? Typically around 50. About 50, is so, it? Okay. Yeah, so it's just a light, a light commuter, which is perfect for going into places like London City and some of the smaller airports. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What's it called? The Saab? Saab 2000. Okay, oh, I haven't heard of that one. I haven't heard of that yeah. one. I've never seen there's, one. Um, there's a light commuter jet, uh, well, um, turboprop called a Saab 340. Oh, yeah, it's I can see it. extended yeah. version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see, yeah. Okay. All right. So what, what are you flying at the moment then? What do you actually... Uh... So I fly the Airbus A320 now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of ours. Um, yeah. 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 So, uh, so, yeah, nice nice aircraft. It's a, it's a series, but like a family of aircraft. So it encompasses the A318, 19, 20 and 21, mm -hmm. um, which are just shortened and stretched versions effectively of the same aircraft. Yeah, yeah. What's your, what's your, what do you prefer, Boeing or Airbus? I mean, I, I'm, I suppose I've got a slightly uh, biased, biased point of view. Um, having moved on, uh, you know what? Cl traditionally, classically, I guess Boeing, yeah. but I'd never, apart from about fifty hours in a in a simulator, yeah. I've never actually uh, flown an, an actual Boeing aircraft, so I yeah. can't give a, a proper, you know, a, a proper answer. But um, having flown the the Airbus, it's a it's a clever bit of kit. It's a clever bit of kit. It's um, it, it does a lot. For you, but there's there's two completely different ideas on on Boeing flying. With Boeing, 
pilots sort of generally prefer that they, they, they feel they, they're flying the aircraft more. It's, mm. it's a more of a classic feel, I guess. Um, yeah. Whereas the Airbus has a lot more technology involved with, with helping you. Yeah. The aircraft. So, I mean, from uh, maybe from a laziness perspective, the Airbus is great. Yeah. Um, and from a sort of maybe a, a purely pilot's flying point of view, um, maybe a Boeing. But uh, having flown the Airbus now, I, I, I'm quite happy to stay on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 what about landing? Is landing easier in, in one or the other? Um, taking off, I would say probably on the Airbus it's easier. Yeah. Um, w- with the assistance that it gives you, mm-hmm. I, I can quite easily make a a, a beautiful landing with, without almost <laughs> uh, putting too much effort in at all. And you know, you get all the praise when you land. Oh, you know, fantastic landing! But really, yeah. it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. That difficult. Whereas um, my previous aircraft, the Star, but I suppose it flies flies a bit more like a Boeing, with a, you know a traditional yoke rather than a flight stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it. I mean, I suppose, I suppose you get more of a sense of achievement with that, in a sense, when you when you really you know when you nail the landing. Um, yeah. Because you have to, you know the input is completely you, whereas obviously it's slightly assisted, if you will. Um, yeah. On the Airbus, which can make an auto land if it, if it needs to, but we don't really use that unless we have to like adverse you know severe adverse weather or something like that yeah 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 have you ever had any um loss of pressure or any issues that you've had to take an emergency landing or anything like that no touch wood i haven't um you know you get <laughs> cheers <laughs> yeah um, there's lots of little things you know we get go arounds all the time maybe an unstable approach or um an aircraft will line up on the runway when you're about to land maybe maybe the, the weather's too much and you can't make the landing mm. um the worst I've had probably, I've had a had a rejected takeoff at Out London City Airport. Um, so we were ploughing down the runway and had to cancel the takeoff at the last second, just as the I think it was the right hand engine hadn't spun up properly. Mm-hmm. So we're getting all the power from the left engine and not much from the right. And yeah. the last place you want to be taken off in a place like that is London City. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that was quite interesting for a few seconds. Um, yeah. But it's you know. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the pressure on the brake, so, you know, full reverse and everything. Um, but no, luckily I've I've been I've been pretty uh, been pretty lucky good, so far. Good. So tell us about the book, A Pilot's Life for Me. Tell us about how it came about and. Um, uh, well, you know what? I've, so I've got I've got friends um, who are who do recruitment for airlines and things like that, and obviously I work with the um, with the page pilot side for me, and we just get questions through all the time, and they're all the same questions. I want to be a pilot. I want to learn to fly, you know, whether it's as a private pilot or whether we're going to commercially. Yeah. And it's, it's all the same questions and no one, you realise how many people don't have a, have a clue about what they're doing. And it's because it's not really common knowledge, not that it's a secret. It's just most people don't know how to go about it. Yeah. Um, so basically, we've sort of collected all the information about how to become a pilot. That's why I've called it a guide on how to become a pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, and put it all together. And that includes everything um, from, you know, wanting to put in your flight bag for your first child flight, medical exemptions and things like that, what you're expecting to pay before you even commence the training, mm-hmm. um, all the way through really to getting a job, um, you know, maybe pr- uh, interview preparation, things like yeah. that. Even once you've got the job, day in the life of what to expect. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes people, you might be able to get the information on how to become a pilot, but what's the life like? What's the salary like? What, you know, yeah. What's the what's the deal with the, like you know your social life, which takes a bit of a hit with the yeah, yeah, um, definitely. unsocial hours sometimes. Mm. Mm. Um, how do you cope with all the um, time differences and in, in the in the in the places you land at, and also how do you how do you cope with pressure on your ears, for example, because. As I love flying, but the only thing I hate about it is the pressure when you're coming down to land. Sure. How do you, how do you cope with both of those things? Well, I mean, firstly, the, the time difference is, is just lots and lots of coffee. Um, really, just try yeah. and you know try and get sleep and good rest before or any any opportunity you can really. Um, yeah. But yeah, otherwise coffee sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit. Um, yeah. The pressure it, it helps you know obviously it helps to swallow where you can if you've got. I mean, traditionally, they used to give out sweets. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Um, when you come into land and take off and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they don't do that so much anymore. But that's always a good idea. It just, just helps you, helps you equalise. 
Yeah. Um, and if, if you're really struggling, sometimes, you know, just a classic close and blow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, will help you clear. But no, I'm, to be honest with you, I, I don't really, I don't really suffer, you know. Um, I just, even <laughs> little things sometimes like, like talking. Yeah. Because you, you're, you're moving about, you're equalising all the time. So, that's, so that can help as well. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. So, um, where do you see the airline industry going then throughout this lockdown? Because there are flights still coming in, aren't they? And, and landing and stuff. There are flights, yeah. Um, I don't think it's going anywhere fast at the moment, if I'm honest. Um, it's, I mean, COVID has devastated the industry. Um, yeah. You know, one of, one of the first industries to be hit uh, and will probably one of the, be one of the last to come out of it as well. Um, I mean, the vaccines are great. Vaccines are, are really helpful for, for everyone, um, yeah. especially, you know, our industry. But I think, you know, we're looking for more of a global uh, vaccination program before we can start really, really getting back to, back to things. So it might, that might be next year, um, mm. to maybe the year after, to get sort of fully back to, you know, the levels of, of say, two years ago. Um, yeah. We are making st- sort of steady progress, so very, very slow, but um, with all the... Uh, the route's cut off, you know, by the government and uh, bans on flying and yeah. things like that. It's, it's obviously very tough at the moment. So you flying at the moment then, or are you, are you just no, housebound? No, I haven't for a while. We, uh, like a lot of pilots, we had very little flying this year. Um, mm-hmm. It was all fine until, what, maybe February, March time. Mm-hmm. And then it, it's, it's really, really very slow. Mm-hmm. Um, so just, just getting in when we can, really. Okay, so um, you have to keep your hours up, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. To, how's that work? Tell us how that works. Um, so basically, yeah, we've got sort of a, a minimum amount of, that, of hours um, we have to fly to keep current, and that, um, that is a good thing. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we're in the simulator at least twice a year as well, um, mm-hmm. getting tested. And we do that at, as a standard, doing COVID or not doing COVID. Um, so, so if you don't fly for a whole year, how, yeah. how would you get your experience in flying? What, what would you do? So first of all, you, you, we we probably take some time in the simulator, and not just sort of you know a day or two session, but probably several you know several good days with a lot of prep, um, okay. covering lots of different things. And um, does that count? Does that count towards um, your flying hours? Uh, sort of, yeah. That they're, they're, they're taken into account in a sense, but not as flight time. So it's only okay. logging hours. You get sort of simulator time, flight time, and then a combined total. Okay. Um, some airlines, you know, if, if you're looking for employment, for instance, um, some airlines will look at the total. More, most are looking for the, the actual flight time where they can. Okay. Um, but in regards to sort of actually, you know, if you're qualified on, on the type, like the A320, for instance, it does help to get new back in the air. Um, once you, you've you, we had to pass a test to reach a certain standard in the simulator, yeah. and then we can move into the aircraft and we do sort of, sort of line flying with a... Um, um, a, a line training pilot or a line training captain uh, yeah. so you know you can you can pick things back up on the line so you, you meet your your standard um, and then the rest of it you can do on the line okay so actually fly in the aircraft you know okay okay so how many hours would you would you need to keep up flying to stay as a commercial airline pilot um, I can't remember off the top of my head I think it's I think it might be 12 hours a, no, actually, uh, I have to come back to you on that. Yeah, yeah, know. okay. Um, okay. We, right. have, we have very complicated HR departments that look after most things, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> fully up to speed on that, and I'll, I'll yeah. find out for you at the end, and I'll let you know. Do you cover that in the book? Do you cover the hours that you need to, to, to keep up? Yeah, with? actually, you know yeah. what? If, I mean, if I looked through it, I'd probably find it in there, but we do have things. <laughs> um, don't worry, mate, don't worry, don't worry. Um, no, that's that's good though because I mean I flew I flew at Cranfield, um, just just light aircraft, a um, couple of lessons, and then I did a couple right. of lessons on the helicopter. Okay, nice. Um, I, I must admit I enjoyed oh, the yeah. helicopter. I, I really yeah. did. I loved it. But yeah, they're good. Yeah. They they just they just fall out of the sky. When they fall out of the sky, I mean, you're in big trouble, aren't you? Yeah, I, I mean I'm not a. Um... I've flown the helicopter a couple of times. I was lucky enough to, to fly on a Chinook a couple of times as well. Um, okay. Which is just a, a absolute beast. Um, but they, they're very different machines to fixed-wing aircraft. Yeah. 
um, and they, they fly very differently as well. Because I mean, it's one of the questions we get quite often. You know, it's can you fly if you got to say a private pilot's license? Can you fly helicopters as well? Um, and no, you don't. You need a separate license for that because they are yeah very different machines. Yeah, yeah but yeah. both good fun to fly. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever say? So have you ever flown a helicopter yourself, or is it just you've been a passenger? Uh, a Chinook for a short time, and a um, uh, a Robinson R twenty two, I think it was for about you know sort of a, a, a twenty minute trial flight. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that's what I flew. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It was one of them, I think they're yeah. sort of a classic, classic for that. It was, it was good. It was good fun. It was, I say good fun. I've done um, done done a bit of glider flying previously yeah. as well, uh, and that's yeah. a completely different ball game but that's uh that's good for sort of you know manual flying skills it's great for that yeah 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 that's good that's good i do like flying my wife says to me like oh please don't start flying please don't fire <laughs> uh, i said to her but you know i don't i don't watch football i don't go to football i don't i don't have any really any outgoings you know in terms of a hobby um, sure. flying would be you know perfect for me and and I've got a friend that's at work who who flies to France when he when he can, obviously COVID pending. Um, yeah. He just flies over there for a picnic, flies back, or flies up to Scotland. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know. It's like you know. I've, it, I've been like, very lucky because I say I've had a I had a private pilot's license for years before I, I could even drive. Um, yeah. So it, I was lucky to be able to. Yeah, I, I could fly down to France for for lunch just because. Yeah. You know, you you can enjoy that. You know, you can enjoy that. So it's it's a great. You know, if, if you if you've got a little bit of excess in, you know, in, or say excess income, but you know, spare income to, to yeah, afford yeah. it, it's it's a great. It's it's great fun. It's great pastime. So so you just triggered off another question for me, and um, and I know I didn't send you this on the thing, but I, I was thinking. So uh, a friend of mine used to fly, and um, he said to me he he was doing a course in cold water immersion or something. As a, as a again. Cold, cold water immersion, like a cold water immersion, right? Okay, yeah. Have you done anything like that for? for uh, I haven't. No, it was that, is that a military friend? No, 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 no. He, he just okay. he's just a private pilot and uh, he oh, just right. said to and me, I, I don't think that in the military sometimes, yeah. Um, you know, they, they have a simulator which is an aircraft airframe and it'll mm. effectively chuck into um, a cold pool, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, so, I haven't done that training. We do, we do, we do some some stuff, you know, um, sort of basic stuff for um, force landings and things like that. You know, if you're on water and how to work everything within within the aircraft, you know, all the rafts, yeah, and, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Life jackets and things like that. But I haven't done sort of cold water immersion stuff as such. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'd be interesting to do. So what? Um. So okay. So um, what's the best? What's the best and worst airfields to take off and land from? In your experience, uh, best of well, well, I mean, my personal experience, I suppose, different. There's um, a start with best. There, there's there's a few to be fair. I mean, I don't know if any, if you have played the new flight simulator or no. um, if any of you new any of your listeners have played the new flight simulator. There's a flight training thing on there. You can learn to fly on it. Yeah, um, it's from a, an airfield called Sedona, and that's in Arizona. It's yeah. effectively a little strip on top of a mountain. You've got a okay. huge spot either side. And I've, I've actually been there in real life. Yeah. Um, in a high aircraft, and it was an amazing place to fly into. You just sort of, yeah. you got, you know, you've got huge uh, mesas and, and hills and mountains on either side of you. And you come into this little strip. Um, bear in mind, you're, you're quite high up. So your engine performance is degraded quite a bit. So when you're taking yeah. off, you expect to be up at a certain point and you're hurtling down the runway hurtling down the runway, still waiting for that speed to increase. And yeah. you, know, you can see the end of the runway coming up. And this is in a tiny aircraft. <laughs> what um, aircraft did you do that in? What aircraft? That was in that, you don't you get them in this country or in the UK, um, but they have in the States, they're Cessna 162. Um, it's still a little 152, which is what you see commonly. It's, it's supposed to be an upgrade to that, but they don't have um, a license over here for, a, it's classed as more of a kit plane over here. Yeah. Um, so it has separate licenses yeah. over here. So that's why we don't really have it. Um, but it's, that was, that was a fun little aircraft. You could, uh, you could, you could fly it. it. It's so small and light. You could, uh, you could fly it by moving. Um, so okay. you could change the sense of gravity by leaning forward and leaning back, and it would, the, the aircraft would actually respond to that. Yeah, so wow. <laughs> it was too. It was flying. If you're in a steady cruise, mm. you know, and we're climbing a tiny bit. I could lean forward just enough, and it, it would uh, <laughs> stop the climb. Wow! Wow! 
Um, but London City, as I was mentioned to you earlier, yeah, uh, it's amazing to fly into, fly out of, especially at night. You've got the whole city lit, lit up. It's it's a beautiful landing and quite a challenging one because you've got a really steep approach. I don't know if you've been in there. No, uh, I, I did. I did some filming in there a few years ago because I'm a, I do background artist work. Sure, okay. They, 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 uh, and I remember seeing them flying in that, and then I thought that's, that looks like a shorter runway to me than than the it's, major. It's a short runway. It's a narrow runway. Yeah. Um, they're doing work on it, but you've got you've got water on either side, and you, of course you've got nearly thousand foot buildings a mile away. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite a it's quite a challenging airport to get into, but I say the views are, are rewarding. Um, really? Okay. And places like Geneva as well are always nice. It's just you just, you fly through the mountains to get there. Um, and that's lovely. Okay. You get some difficult, uh, some difficult landings. I've been to a couple of places in Africa. Um, yeah. That can be. I, I say difficult. Again, I've, I've been reasonably lucky so far. Um, but uh, it's not uncommon for you know wildlife to be walking across the runway, and you know, <laughs> wildlife is slightly different to our wildlife. It won't yeah. be you know, it's not uncommon for an elephant to walk across the uh, runway or an ostrich <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Um, and the birds are bigger as well. I've, I've had colleagues hit um, vultures and things like that, and they, they do just monumental damage yeah. to the aircraft. Yeah, 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 of course. Of course they do. Um, I, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a website on, online that shows uh, bird strikes on, on aircraft. I can't remember what it's called now, but you get some shocking ones. And some, I mean, some of the damage can be, yeah, really bad. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm working I'm working on a radome project at the moment for um, the military, British military, and um, we get the radomes back to our site and with damage, and we have to repair them. They're made out of Kevlar, and Kevlar well, Kev, yeah. Kevlar's strong. You know, it's used in bulletproof um, uh, body armor. You know, it's quite a tough material. But the, where the bird, but where you, where the bird strikes it, it gives it a big indentation. Sometimes you've got feathers sticking out of it. It's crazy. I've not, yeah, I've seen. I've not seen it in person, but I've seen some pictures. Yeah, uh, like you know, you, you'll have feathers, and, and you just think the amount of colossal damage that mm. a, a bird has caused. Yeah, uh, obviously feel sorry for the bird as well. But have you have you ever flown out of um, Hong Kong? Airport? I haven't. No, um, that's supposed to be like, quite. Yeah, that's supposed to be. Yeah, it's the old the old air, uh, airport as well. I would have you know would have been. Uh, it's all again. It's a, a flight simulator classic. Yeah. Um, but it would have it would have been interesting to fly out of. <laughs> I suppose the worst closer to home is is for me personally is is Leeds, Leeds Bradford. Okay. And it should be, it should it should just be regular. But every time I go in there, it seems to be, have some huge storm system. Yeah. Um, and I've got you know it, it's bon- built on top of a hill with a town either end of the runway. Um, yeah. So the winds going across are, are quite heavy. And um, it just seems every time I go in there, I say we're in the storm system and we've got huge crosswinds and it, it makes it a real, real challenge. I've got a couple of videos I've put up before of just very challenging, you know, safe, but very, yeah. very challenging approaches into there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what's your favourite aircraft you've ever flown? Um, probably what I'm on now. To be honest with you, the 320 is a lovely bit of kit. I, I did love the um, the Saab. It's 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 a lovely aircraft to fly, and it's over, sort of really overpowered, um, which is great for getting you out of tricky situations. Yeah. Um, and you know, say for, for places like only London, yeah, sorry, landing in London City and yeah, places like yeah. that, you know, if you need to, you've got that extra power, and it was it was a lovely aircraft to fly. Um, but I think for everything that offers, the A320 is is nice the, the, the Saab one is that a commercial flight or is that private yeah no it's, it's commercial um, commercial so how do I book a flight on one of those I'm, I'm quite intrigued now <laughs> right. they're, they're not as common as they used to be um, I know they're used a lot more in sort of uh, Norway and places like that Sweden excuse me um, but we did we do I think we still have some in this in this country um, mm. They used to fly into London City. I know that. I'm not sure what they do now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can let you know. I'll, I'll, I've, got, yeah. I've got I've got to fly them. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Email, email me. Yeah, email me because I'd, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to fly. I'd love to fly on one of those. It looks like yeah, a, I'm interesting. They're, they're a great little aircraft. Mm. They had um, that the, the one of the 
first sort of they had you know, the the, uh, the passive or active noise cancelling. Yeah. Um, you got the speakers all along the aircraft. Obviously, it's a turboprop. It's a little bit louder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this is in the uh, what ninety one? I think it was nineteen ninety one. Yeah, they had the active noise cancelling. Um, yeah. Speakers to sort of quieten the uh, the cabin. So that was that was quite you know quite quite a feat at the time. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago. Well, a few years ago, I'm talking twenty years ago now. When I was a graduate engineer at um, British Aerospace, and um, we used to do these cohorts around the country. You know, all, all, so so it'd be. Um, Astrium, which is now where I work, um, but it's now Airbus Space and Defence. You had um, uh, BA Systems, and you had MBDA, the missile place, and the three, the three had uh, graduate engineers, and all those graduate engineers would get together and be flown somewhere on a private jet. Now, right, okay. BA, BA Systems have a, a twin prop aircraft. I'm not sure if they still run it now, but I they remember do. they do. Oh, What's it called? Is it, is it out of Barrow and Furnace? Yes. Yeah. yeah one of my um, my friends and colleagues, uh, that was his uh, his first flying job. That was, was on it? the King Air, I think it was. What's what what aircraft is that? Because I can't I can't remember. Uh, it's a King Air. It's a King Air, is it? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'm almost certain it's a King Air. Yeah, because I remember they picked us up. I think it was either London, was it London City or Luton? It might be Luton actually. Picked us up at Luton and flew us up to Scotland. Um, right. We had a three-day event, and um, they, they used to they used to do that quite regularly. I don't I don't think they do that anymore because of uh, the, the you know the money the money side of things now and all that. But that that was good fun because uh, I'd never been on a yeah. twin I'd never been on a prop engined aircraft before um, until that day. Bloody hell, it was noisy. <laughs> yeah, they can they can be um, they can be quite noisy, especially some of the older ones. Yeah, some, yeah. Some of the older ones are you know a bit more. Uh, or much better, but yeah. Have you have you ever flown or, or have been on a on a, on a seaplane? No, uh, I haven't. I'd love to though. I was I was supposed to um on my uh, honeymoon um when we got married a couple a couple of years ago. We were going yeah. to the Maldives uh, via Dubai, and we were supposed to get a seaplane to one of our islands. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, my wife uh, got ill. We had to cancel yeah. pretty much about two days before. Um, which is insane, but we were supposed to we were supposed to go on a seaplane now, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I'd love that's to, where uh, we went. That's where we did it on our honeymoon in the Maldives. Yeah, yeah it was really weird. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't realise that. Cause oh, really? we, no, because we flew we flew from here to Dubai and then Dubai to what's the capital of Maldives? I can't remember. Uh, is it um, Mali? No, Mali, Mali, Mali yeah. and then we got and then we got um, I think we got a boat to an island. And right. then from the island, there was a seaplane waiting for us. Oh, um, okay. And it was, I think it was an old de Havilland. Oh, yeah. Like a, what, a twin otter or, or a yeah, otter? Yeah, or... yeah. I think it was a twin otter or something like that. And my wife was absolutely shit in her pants. She was. She was so scared. <laughs> she was so scared. I loved it. I loved the experience. And uh, yeah, I remember I, the part. I'd love to have yeah. done it. And I, we, we will. We will soon. Um, you know, maybe once year or two once all, you know all this blows over but um yeah we, we will go back and we'll get back on it but yeah um i don't know if you were, if you saw the um the pilots flying but they got the, the throttle controls they got on the sort of on the overhead panel yeah, instead of yeah which yeah, is quite yeah. unique to that aircraft yeah yeah that's, that's a nice that was a nice aircraft though i mean the landing was a bit bumpy we, we kind of came down landed on the scene and bounced off it and then carried on bouncing right okay i don't know whether that's normal but uh, <laughs> I'd love to say yes or no, but I, I wouldn't know myself. <laughs> I'm sure one of my landings would be a bit bumpy, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what aircraft? What aircraft have you never flown that you would have loved to? Um, as, as obviously, it's not going to happen um, now. As a kid, I always wanted to be Concorde pilot. Um, you know, I wanted I wanted to fly commercially as a kid, um, and then as I got a bit older, I thought about maybe the military as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I start to the, the civilian side. Um, yeah. Concorde was always the dream. I mean, I suppose it would be for anyone yeah. at that age. Um, and we'll be able to do that now. But uh, some of the some of the new aircraft coming out now, the, the 350, the 380, the the um, 777X, um, even the, the 787, you know, the Dreamline, I think aircraft like that are pretty special to fly, I think. 
Um, mm. you know, they, can, they do so much now. They're sort of technical marvels, as I'm, I'm sure you're aware. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, maybe maybe one day it'd be nice to fly one of them. But, yeah, one that I, I won't be able to fly but would love to is definitely Concorde. Mm, mm. Well, even, even, even though the Concorde um, was a... Well, I think I, I think it was a it was um, a government decision, a political decision to shut down Concorde because it wasn't making money. But but obviously it had a, a few accidents before it got closed off and stuff. Even though it had those accidents, would you still have liked to fly an aircraft? Oh, I mean, until it had the, the accident in Paris, it had it had a pretty much perfect safety record. Um, yeah. So actually, it was a completely safe aircraft, and the accident that was caused that you know it's, it's never yeah it's never a single thing it's normally a chain of, of things that happen um and this was i think an aircraft part from a dc-10 yeah um, yeah hit the, hit the under wing the underneath the wing right yeah i think so um hit the fuel tank or something like that yeah so it's you know i can't blame the aircraft but it because of the you know the new the era of the internet and and you know Different, lots and lots of different aspects. I think it yeah. may have been coming to a natural end anyway, and I think that sort of just just put the nail in the coffin, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah still would have flown it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm not sure they've got any programs to replace the gun. I, I have seen a few talks about it, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've I've seen talks, but I think it's it will never be more than that. I think it would be, you know, all the airframes that we do have. Have been sitting in museums for years mm. now. Mm. Um, I think it would be so expensive to to get, even just to get one flying just for air shows or something, you know, anything like that. I think you know the, the cost to get it going again and maintenance and everything, not to mention training crew on it again. Mm. Um, mm. I think it would be just be colossal. And I, I just, what do you think of the flying car? This whole flying taxi. Um, do you think it will be a commercial entity in 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 our um, world? I think so. Yeah, I think uh, not for a while, um, but I think so. Not so much because of the technology, I don't think, but more the technicality of operating it. You know, if you're going to have flying cars about all over the place, mm. um, you're going to need to have sort of standards in place to maintain safety. And mm. it, you know, obviously, it's not the same as just you know driving a car. Mm. You'd need at the moment, at least anyway. You'd, you'd need both the private. Uh, well, a pilot's license and a driving license to operate it um and you know can can you have i think you need a whole infrastructure i think really to to use it properly yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. unless you're in maybe the wilderness mm. um but i think in time i think i think in time that we'll, we'll probably see them but mm. not for a while because mm. i've often been, been my on, opinion anyway yeah but. i mean i've often been on the m25 i've been stuck in traffic and i'm thinking if I could just go like that, lift up over these cars and just fly, that would be amazing. I've thought exactly the same thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but then, but then you, exactly like you the say, it's the airspace, isn't it? It's, you've got control, uh, who, who goes where and how they all slot together, you know? Um, yeah, know it's, how... it's, it's a really difficult one. You know, I say maybe in the future with the right sort of infrastructure, there might be, a, you know, it could well be a thing, um, especially in, you know, low density parts of the world mm. but you know in cities you probably won't see them for a while but yeah maybe maybe in like sort of you know low you know more sparsely populated areas yeah see yeah. them first but again you know we're talking in the future but I, I, i'd love to be i'd love to see a future where we have flying cars i think that'd be brilliant mm. even mm. if i do put stuff out of the job <laughs> <laughs> hopefully hopefully not um um it, no, it, was, it was it was weird because um a, f a few years ago, um, uh, quite a few years ago, 30 years ago now, I remember getting on the plane and speaking to the pilot. Now you don't see him. You don't really... I haven't been on a plane for a long time where the pilot comes out and says... No. Hello to us. We, no, we don't... I think it's, it's a mixture of things. Now, obviously, you know, after 9-11, everything changed. Yeah. Um, but I think with uh, commercial pressures now, we have a lot less time to set everything up on the aircraft you know turns turnarounds are a lot shorter um so we don't have as much time to say hello to be honest with you personally i always try and make a point of it I, you know where i can I'll, I'll greet everyone or at least say goodbye um to the passengers when they disembark 
Um, and, you know, if we have the time as well, before we go, obviously, we get, it's normally only kids, um, but sometimes we've got adults as well that, you know, just want to see the flight deck. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm normally happy to have them, to have them up, have a look, because yeah. I think, it, people, you know, people are interested, people want to see stuff. And especially yeah. with people with fear of flying, sometimes yeah. it's really helpful to, to see us and to see the flight deck and, and yeah. you know, if you've got a couple of minutes just to explain what different things do, I think that puts them at rest a lot more of this, a lot less, because um, sometimes, you know, it's the feeling of control, isn't it? Mm. And if you know that someone's actually in control, you can see what they're doing. Mm. Um, obviously, unfortunately, you can't do that during flight now, but, um, you know, before before the flight, sometimes it's, it's helpful for them to see that. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, David, it was a pleasure having you on, on, on this podcast. I really enjoyed my time. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been good to chat to you. No, it's been, it's been, I know it's been a short one, but um, uh, I, I, I do enjoy talking to people with knowledge about areas that I'm interested in. Uh, sure. And hopefully our listeners are, are going to be interested in. Hopefully we'll inspire some young pilots to take to the skies because, um, I mean, I wanted to be a pilot when I was younger. Um, somehow I ended up being a chef in a five-star restaurant in London, <laughs> um, or a hotel, sorry. And then um, two years later, I just said to my dad, look, I don't really want to be, in, uh, be, a, be a, a chef anymore. I prefer to be eating the, eating the food and not preparing it. So, <laughs> <Good enough. laughs> so, um, so I, I went on to be an engineer, a designer, a spacecraft designer, which, which is what I do now, really. Um, but uh, yeah, in a way, I wish I wish I continued. It was either that or being an architect. And I know architects, um, it takes a long, long time to become an architect. I think it's 10 years. Um, but uh, how, how long did it take you to become a, a, an aircraft, commercial aircraft um, pilot? Well, probably not as long as it took to, um, to, you know, sort of design spaceships. But uh, yeah. it, it took about two, two years, roughly. It normally takes about 18 months to two years depending okay. on the types of training that you're doing. Okay, um, where, where did you do yours, by the way? Um, so I did mine, so we have to do, have to do ground theory. Um, I did yeah. that at Oxford. Mm-hmm. Um, they got a big flying school there. Uh, yes, and then a local right. airfield um, near to me um, called Stapleford, Stapleford Flight Centre. Um, oh. where I did my, my flight training there. They're getting quite big now. Um, and I did all my flight training there because I've been flying there since I was, well, since I was 18, so... Oh, okay. um, you know, I knew the instructors and I was happy there. Oh, okay. Okay. Because a friend of mine did, did it in Florida. Yeah, a lot of people do. Uh, a lot of people do do it in Florida or Arizona um, yeah. and places like that as well. Because, uh, you know, you can get the weather there, which is brilliant. The only, the only not an issue, because uh, you can do a lot, uh, a lot more flying there. Um, yeah. But sometimes when you come over back to the UK, obviously we've got a much smaller space to work with busy airspace around here, London, some of the busiest airspace in the world. Um, you know, if you're flying around the Midlands where you've got, you know, um, Manchester, Liverpool and places like that, or say around London, it can mm. be very busy as compared to Florida where there's not too much going on. Yeah. Um, so yeah. sometimes it's a little bit of, of a shock from, for people coming over, having, you know, just done their, their PPL uh, in, you know, Florida or Arizona, yeah. these places. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. But obviously we don't get the weather here at all, so it can take a bit longer. Yeah, yeah, because crosswinds, crosswinds are a major problem, isn't it? Especially on landing. Yeah, they can be. Yeah, they, they can yeah. be, especially, you know, I mean, if, if it's just a few knots, it's not even an issue at all. Um, but they can be, you, you get used to them, but they, it's, it's something you do have to get used to. You know, they, they, are, <laughs> they are, a bit more, are a bit more tricky. They, you know, use a bit more, use a bit more brain power to, uh, to have to fly them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 One final question. This is for, for sure. my fa- father-in-law because he's, he's absolutely petrified of flying. In fact, right. he's, 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 he's Sicilian and he used to go on holiday to Sicily every year when my wife was a, a little girl. And he used to drive there because he was petrified of flying. Wow, okay. That's so drives? Yeah, it is. So, so, so what, what, what would you suggest for someone like that? Apart from, I've said to him to go hypnotherapy. I think that will work. He, yeah, he's he's old school. He doesn't believe in that. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, you know, there, there's there's fear of flying courses and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I think, you know, a little bit of knowledge um, is is power. 
you know, it, so, so sometimes it's, you know, like you, you've taken a, a child flight. I don't know if you're, was it your father-in-law yeah. or your father, did you say? It was, it was, uh, well, it was what, the flying lesson you mean? That was me. Uh, no, 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 with the, with the fear of flying. Oh, with the fear of flying, it's my father-in-law, yeah. Your father-in-law, sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I said, I don't know if he's, he's thought about doing something like you did, you know, with taking a couple of lessons. Yeah. Um, or sometimes jumping in a simulator, you can get quite good deals these days to, to yeah. get in a, um, a simulator for something like a Boeing or, you know, an Airbus aircraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just having a little idea about what's happening sometimes yes. is quite empowering and just, you know, puts you more at ease because you know what these strange noises are and what that bump is, what, they, you know, you, you know, because it's all, it's all well and good people telling people about turbulence, for instance, yeah. which is, you know, it's just like driving down a bumpy road, which it is. But sometimes if you experience it with the aircraft or, or yeah. the simulator in your, in your control, mm. it just helps cement that, that idea. Um, mm. So sometimes I think, you know, just getting a little bit more hands on, whether it's a trial flight, a simulator or something like that, um, it's a good little way. But otherwise I'd say there are um, uh, fear of flying courses, which you, you know, a bit more, I don't know how bad his fear is, um, but they're, they're a bit more involved. They're normally a day or a couple of days. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Designed to sort of help and more understanding and things like that. Okay. Okay. I'll look into it for a Christmas present or something. Maybe, oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe a 70th birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, mate. All right. Thank you for that, man. Okay. Well, look, look, mate, it was a pleasure talking to you. Um, yeah, hopefully this, inspire, this inspires loads of people to go out and try flying and see if, uh, and get people to the skies even if it's gliding um, which is a good good pastime um, it is absolutely. yeah oh yeah definitely um look take care and um, tell us where t- where people can find you on your social media um and where they can find your book and buy your book sure i think yeah so um so we're on facebook and instagram a pilot's life for me yeah. um and a pilot's life for me uk on instagram mm-hmm. uh, the book is on amazon you can either type in a pilot's life for me um or a guide on how to become a, uh, an airline pilot. Both of them will come up. Um, and it's available as an ebook, as a paperback as well. Um, or you can go to the website, which is um, pilotslife.co.uk, and it's all on there as well. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, have a good day, and uh, we'll catch up soon. All right? Yeah, no, brilliant. Thanks, Dervis. Thank you, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, mate. Take care. Bye. Bye.